A survey for staffing firm Randstad shows that 9 out of 10 Malaysians are looking to emigrate for better career opportunities and work-life balance. According to the findings of the survey, 89% of Malaysian respondents would move abroad to pursue a meaningful career, while 85% would be persuaded by substantially higher salary. They voted Australia, Singapore and Japan as their top three countries of choice to work in. This is because companies in these markets are perceived to be able to provide higher salaries and support healthier work-life initiatives. These markets also have better currency exchange rates. Meanwhile, 8 in 10 Malaysians surveyed want to work in a role that allows them to travel. Ransett explains that having an overseas exposure is important to these workers as they can gain different perspectives, learn new skills from their global counterparts and build a global network of connections. However, Ransett warns these sentiments also mean that companies need to improve their employee attraction and engagement initiatives to avoid a possible brain drain in Malaysia. Tun Dr. Mahathir Mohamad has defended the measures taken by the government to address the Asian financial crisis. These measures taken during his tenure as Malaysia's fourth PM have been criticised for benefiting the country's tycoons. In a blog posting today, the PM said sarcastically that it would have been good if the government hadn't helped the tycoons and let them and their businesses run into losses and fail. This, he said, would have led to the retrenchment of all their staff, a fall in exports and a stop to inflow of foreign funds. He said the government in turn would then lose out on corporate taxes and income taxes, which would bring the country's development to a halt. Eventually, he said, Putrajaya would then be forced to impose taxes on those not defined as tycoons, forcing them into poverty. So, if the government wanted to, he said it could drive out all the tycoons and help only those who are not ultra-wealthy. But how would the government assist those in need, he asks, if the tycoons can no longer pay taxes? He ended his post with a sarcastic apology for enriching these tycoons in his efforts to help the country overcome the financial crisis. Bursa Malaysia saw its third quarter earnings shrink by 6% to 47.1 million ringgit as operating revenue slumped. Quarterly top line fell 5.5% to 122.7 million ringgit. The Boris operator says the securities market performance during the quarter continued to be influenced by both global and domestic developments, such as the heightened risk of global economic slowdown, easing of global financing conditions and weaker corporate earnings. These developments, coupled with the uncertainties over the US-China trade negotiations, saw the market's total trading value continue to decline. Despite the external headwinds, Borsa believes that Budget 2020, with its expansionary measures, are expected to provide support to the market and focus on achieving a sustainable economic growth. CEO Datuk Muhammad Omar Swift says Borsa expects to register a satisfactory performance for the rest of the year. One MDB former chief Datuk Shahrul Azra Ibrahim Halmi has admitted to being One MDB officer too, mentioned in the 2016 lawsuits by the US Justice Department. He also confirmed that former One MDB executive director Casey Tang King Chi was One MDB officer one. However, despite being referred to in the filing, Shahrul said he did not go through it thoroughly when it was first released. This was because he was turned off by the fact that the DOJ had accused him of knowingly being complicit in the diversion of 700 million US dollars from 1MDB into Goodstar, the company controlled by Low Tech Joe. Under cross examination today, Shahrul claimed the DOJ did not have complete information about the deal and that no one had approached him to seek clarification. According to the DOJ, 1MDB Officer 2 had misled banks and 1MDB's board of directors into believing that Goodstar was owned by Petro Saudi International and not Low. Today, Shahrul admitted he was not sure until now as to the extent of which Lo and Tang had lied to him during the course of the 1MDB PSI joint venture arrangement. However, he is adamant that then PM Datuk Sri Najib Razak was aware of the remittance to Goodstar. Tan Sri Vincent Tan's private company, Singer Malaysia, has emerged as PN17 firm Berjaya Media's saviour. The publisher of The Sun newspaper was supposed to enter into a definitive agreement with a white knight by October 20th. 
However, Singer, which was meant to be injected into Berjaya Media according to its regularization plan, is having issues with the company's Commission of Malaysia over its audited financial statements, hence the delay. Berjaya Media says this and the completion of due diligence review and valuations of the Singer business should be completed by March 31, 2020. It will submit an appeal to Bursa to seek an extension of time to enable the company to finalise the plan. Tan holds a 38.9% stake in the financially distressed firm.